A new criminal case raises questions about how some in the medical community are pushing the use of addictive painkillers. Six former executives and managers from Arizona-based drug maker Insys Therapeutics face conspiracy charges over what a federal prosecutor calls a racketeering scheme. Investigators say they bribed doctors to prescribe the company's pain medication even when it wasn't necessary. Jim Axelrod has reported extensively on the opioid epidemic. He's here with the disturbing evidence. Jim, good morning. Well, good morning. In this case, according to the indictment, the former employees of the drug manufacturer are alleged to have rewarded doctors for prescribing their spray version of the opiate fentanyl, even when it wasn't medically appropriate. Every day in this country, 46 people die from an overdose of prescription painkillers. As millions of Americans have discovered, it doesn't take much to become addicted. And the experts battling this epidemic are focusing on the way the drugs are prescribed. My body would feel sick. Uh, it was like totally like the most horrible flu that you've ever felt if I didn't take the pill. It was after an appendix surgery 14 years ago that Trey Laird says he became hooked on opioid painkillers. To be able to walk out of the hospital with 90 pills and then to have two refills on that prescription, so to be able to get 270 pills without ever seeing a doctor uh, in retrospect is pretty ridiculous. For six years, he says he wasn't the husband or the father he wanted to be. The embarrassment and the shame and the guilt that comes with the fact that now I find myself in this situation. I don't know how I got here, but I don't know how to get out of it. I had no clue how to get out of it. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has said the United States is in the midst of an opioid overdose epidemic. The agency reports doctors wrote 259 million prescriptions for painkillers in 2012, enough for every American adult. As many as one in four people currently struggle with addiction after long-term opioid treatments for non-cancer pain. There's been excessive prescribing for an excessive number of conditions that are indiscriminate uh, outside the standard of care that is driving some of what we're seeing currently. The problem is back in the spotlight after the arrests of a half dozen former executives and managers at Insys Therapeutics, including the company's former CEO. The device that I brought with me today allows the patient to simply, with no priming, spray the drug underneath their tongue. Three years ago on CNBC, Michael Babbage demonstrated the company's drug Subsys, a prescription pain reliever for cancer patients, which is delivered through a spray. The medication, which the company first sold in 2012, racked up $329 million in sales last year. According to the indictment, the defendants conspired with one another to use bribes and kickbacks for doctors who wrote large numbers of prescriptions, most often for patients who did not have cancer. The scheme allegedly funneled tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars to practitioners, including one whom a sales representative boasted in an email was running a very shady pill mill and only accepts cash. Is that the exception or the rule? That is clearly the exception. Um, there is egregious criminal irking behavior out there, but that is the 1% that's given the 99% a bad name. Like most of the misprescribing that occurs out there, I believe is actually well intended and is just done inappropriately due to lack of educational foundation. This issue didn't evolve overnight and it's not going to be solved overnight. Ann Pritchett from the Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America says the drug industry supports changes, including the creation of evidence-based guidelines to lay out exactly when opioid painkillers are appropriate and the development of new formulations that make drugs more resistant to certain types of abuse. As for Trey Laird, he's been clean since 2011 and now runs a sober living house in Connecticut. He suggests he might have been able to prevent his addiction if only he'd been forced to ask for more painkillers in person. If I needed a refill, I should have to go back to the doctor and say, hey, I'm still feeling the pain, and then have them write a script. But I needed to look somebody in the eye and say, I need pills. The former drug company executives and managers are due in court early next month. The lawyer for the former CEO tells us he plans to plead not guilty to charges, including racketeering and conspiracy. We reached out to the other defendants but did not hear back. Insys Therapeutics released a statement saying it continues to cooperate with all relevant authorities in its ongoing investigations and is committed to complying with laws and regulations that apply. Wow, what a story.
Thanks, Especially Jim. at this particular moment. Problem doesn't get any better. Mm -hmm. Jim Axelrod, thanks, Jim.